Have you ever had a dream and wondered, should I stay or should I go? Should I keep going or should I stop? <laughs> How many of you knew all those words? How many of you knew, thought you knew the words, but the words were different than what you used to sing? <laughs> That's why I put them up. It's like, I, you know, okay, fine. Anyway, so that was a little deviation from our normal music flow, but it does speak to our message. Powerful dreams. Powerful dreams. Have you had one? And it just didn't seem to manifest. You did your treating, you're moving your feet and all the things you were supposed to do, but it just didn't seem to come into manifestation year after year after year, no matter what you did. Maybe you're someone who has a lot of dreams right now, who's working on them, but you're not maybe seeing the results that you thought you would be seeing by now. Or maybe you're someone that's finally going, eh, what's the use? I'm going to give up. It's, it's too late. It's too late. No matter where we are on this journey, we've all had the experience at some point of wanting, desiring something in our lives that just doesn't seem to show up, at least the way we want it to. We all had that experience at some point. Yeah, it just doesn't show up. My talk today is Rescued by Love. And as we mentioned, our movie is Rescued by Ruby, Ruby, and it is a wonderful true story based on a true story about a man and his dog. And the stars of the show each have powerful dreams. Those are the stars, by the way. They both have powerful dreams that just aren't quite manifesting for them for long periods of time. And we're gonna see how, what the challenges and things that they go through. And I'm not going to tell you more about the movie. I was fussed at last week for showing too much of the clip of the movie beforehand, but okay. So I won't, tell, I won't give it away today. We're going to look at this idea, the idea of faith and knowing when to stay or go, right? In the, through the lens of the science of mind. That's what we're going to look at today. Ernest Holmes, who's the founder of Centers for Spiritual Living, also the author of The Science of Mind, the big book that we teach from that's also for sale in the lobby if you need a copy of it. He was talking about faith one day, and he said, when we reduce it to its utmost simplicity, faith resolves itself into a mental attitude towards life. It is a certain positive and affirmative way of thinking. Sounds simple? I agree with that statement. Faith, living in faith is a positive, affirmative way of thinking. And I think there's more to it. I think there's more to it because we first have to get our fears and our doubts put to rest in order to live in fear and faith, to live in faith. If you remember the, the quote of Jesus, get behind me, Satan, the temptations of Satan, right? Those are the thoughts. Metaphysically, it's the thoughts that jumble up and get in our way that cause us doubt, that cause us fear. Get behind me. My faith is strong. My faith is strong. But the question that's come up for me as I've worked with this material this week is where do we stop believing? As we're walking through life, at what point do we say, well, yes, yeah, spiritually I believe this, but this is what's really true in reality, right? The economy, my health, that's what's true in reality. I'm spiritual. Where do we draw the line? Where do we draw the line between what we truly believe, we're steadfast in our beliefs, and what the world of effects is reflecting and telling us is true. Where is that line? Where is that boundary? Is it a thin line or is it a wide boundary? That's the question I've been asking this week. It's tough to know how to keep going. It's easier to quit sometimes, isn't it? Particularly when everything out there is saying, is, you know, it's not gonna work anyway. What are you wasting your time for? Anybody heard those kinds of comments before? 
I'm going to heal it with my mind. <laughs> right. And yet we do all the time, don't we? So the question of believing is up to each one of us individually to decide. How much am I going to believe? What am I going to believe? For how long am I going to believe it? Where's my line? Where's my boundary? Where's my belief? Right? It's up to us individually because we're individualized. We get to make that choice. And the, I warn us, the more steadfast we are in our beliefs, we can be negatively judged by that. Particularly when the world of effects is the general consensus is saying, you can't do that. You can't do that. Right? When everything around us says to, to quit, or worse, don't even try. Don't even try that. You'll never make it. Right? That's why we don't share our dreams when they're very young, tender sprouts in the beginning with people that can't support us, right? Because they give us their doubts and we, we accept them. We start to doubt our dreams. So we keep them quiet. We hold them close to our chest. We share them only with people we know that will support us in that vision and in that dream. Our friends, our family, maybe even fate. The universe doesn't appear to be cooperating with us. Do we stay or do we go? But why is it, even under such dire pressure, circumstances, situations, some people keep going? They keep striving. They stay the course. Their faith is strong in their dream or desire. What is it with them that they can keep going and persevere? And we hear these wonderful winning stories about that. Where does that faith and that inspiration come from? Remember the movie, um, oh gosh, I had it this morning, the bobsled team from Jamaica. Cool Running, I think it was called. Yeah. I mean, think about that movie. It's based on a true story, right? They were from Jamaica. It doesn't snow there. They were going to be a bobsled team in the Winter Olympics, sliding down an ice hill. I mean, freezing their, their raffia hats off, right? They wore those and stuff. But it's, you know, perseverance, faith, inspiration. They kept going and they got there. They got there. What inspires you to keep going? Have you ever thought about it? What inspires me to keep going, to keep getting up every day, to keep working on the project, to keep working on the, the idea, the opportunity? What keeps you going every day? Is it a coach? Someone outside that keeps, you know, motivating you? Maybe it's a team that you feel a responsibility with, that you're working with, that you're going to keep going? Or maybe it's a friend that kind of acts like a coach that encourages you. I have a friend that did that for my golf game when I first started playing because heaven knows I was ready to throw the clubs in. But, you know, her inspirations and rah-rah every time we played golf and no matter how bad the shot was, she went, good job. <laughs> it's like, okay, if you think so. <laughs> oh, so close. <laughs> so... Sometimes, though, it can be an inner GPS system, sort of, can it? Anybody has, we all got GPS on our phones now, right? But there's, an, there's a guidance system within us that just tells us to keep going, keep going in this direction. It's what inspires us. It's the spark within us that keeps us going. I've been inspired this past year to watch, past two years actually now, to watch Joe. Joe Hammer our marketing communications director, 2020. Anybody remember 2020? <laughs> About the middle of the year, Joe launches a new business called the Outcasters Improv. He had a dream. He had a vision. He stuck with it in some very difficult times, times when a lot of businesses were failing and closing their doors and stopping. Joe had a dream and a vision and he stayed with it. He stayed inspired and he kept going. 
And now in 2022, he's got a pretty successful business going. And I'll shamelessly plug him. He's here every Wednesday evening teaching his classes. And he teaches online on Tuesday evenings. And he's doing presentations for the business community to incorporate the skills of improvisation in their businesses. Because improv, yes, it can be funny, right? But it's also a very valuable skill of learning to think on your feet. Would that be helpful to anybody? Yeah, it's very helpful, isn't it? That's what he's teaching. That's his dream, and that's what he's doing. And I've personally been really honored to watch you unfold this business from zero to, you know, a thousand. So good job. Good job. During that time, there was a lot of innovation and creativity. Have you thought about that at all? Yeah. You know, amongst all the fear and everything else and the chaos, chaos that was going on, there was a lot of creativity and innovation happening. Restaurants, who had never done takeout beyond a doggy bag, finally figured out how to do a full-on dinner in a box and deliver it curbside. Retail stores figured out how to do online shopping that they would then bring to your car curbside. And people like us figured out how to stream our services, our classes, our meetings, our workshops online through the internet. Innovative, creative. Out of obstacles comes creativity, right? We're facing some times right now in the economy where if you're keeping up with any of that stuff, they're starting to use the R word. They're starting to talk about recession. We hear inflation. I was on a webinar this week and was delighted to hear one of the most negative conservative economists that I know of locally here, known him for years, talking about, this is just a blip. Don't worry about it. It's a correction. It's a, you know... I was like, wow, he's always usually so negative about stuff. And for him to take this contrary in position, it's like, this must be a minor blip. Yay. So they're calling it like a re, not a re, not a recession, a, um, can't remember, a re, reset, it wasn't reset, but it's like a reset. It's a, it's a, like a deceleration. Cause if you think about it, he was talking specifically about, um, real estate and the, uh, building frenzy that we cannot support with our subcontracting community and our supplies and so forth and how rates are rising and slowing down sales enough that we can start to catch our breath and keep up. Quality comes back into construction, things like that. So, you know, when you read headlines, how are you taking them in? Is it fear or is it, hmm, what opportunity is in this for me? Joe saw that opportunity for his business last year because it had opened up a place, a space for another improv group, and he was able to fill that void. What void can you fill through creativity rather than fear? Rather than fear. We get into fear and we get shut down, don't we? We get shut down. So what did keep most of us motivated during those dark days of 2020 what kept us motivated what kept us going what inner light within us kept shining to tell us it's okay we'll get through this you're okay what light within you kept flashing you're okay you're okay what is that where did all those creative ideas come from out of the blue in the middle of a pandemic, or they've been hiding. The science of mind teaches us that we are one with universal spirit. Have you ever heard that? Good. And that it will inspire and direct us through our life as long as we allow it, right? We also learn about the universal law of cause and effect. It is done as we believe as we believe. And I think that these two principles, these two core principles of our teaching are at the core of our faith and our dreams, of pursuing those dreams. 
one of my personal prayers is that I am open to receive the guidance, guarding, and direction of spirit in every moment. I am guided, guarded, and directed in every moment. And I have to be open to that, right? It was Emerson that said, get our bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. And that's what he's talking about, right? Because we can shut it out. We can shut it down. Spirit is always giving to us. But when we get in our egos, in our heads, and we're going to do it ourselves, no matter if it's the hard way, we're going to do it ourselves. And we get in the way of those divine circuits, that divine flow that is coming through us in support of us. We live in a friendly universe that loves us and supports us and wants to give always. We have to be open to receive it, right? We have to be open to receive it. And this is why it's important that we do the work of changing our thinking to change those limiting beliefs to empowering beliefs. We talked about this some in our mental equivalence workshop that we did, that we we have to change our negative beliefs by diluting them until they become positive beliefs, until we can make new empowering beliefs. It's like pouring clean water into dirty water. It eventually displaces it to where you've got all clean water again. We can't just get rid of a negative thought. Most of us can't anyway. It doesn't happen that easily. So we have to continue to dilute those and replace them. If we got rid of them like that, we would still have to replace them because now we've got a vacuum, right? So we have to replace those with empowering. This year in the center, our theme, is, anybody know what our theme is this year? Very good. Yes. Amazing grace. And we are learning how we can grow and expand. <laughs> Very good. Very good. We're learning how we can grow and expand in, um, in grace and understanding this guidance of grace that we get in, in spirit. So it's about developing a relationship with the divine. I gave a talk once several years ago about dating God, and uh, it was actually pretty funny, but it was it was true. It's, it's building a relationship with the divine and paying attention, being present every day. If you were dating a, a lover, calling them in, you would be spending time with them. You would be talking with them, right? And that's the idea of building that intimate relationship with the divine within so that we know that power and presence of the universe that lives within us. And that's how we begin to grow and develop in our experience of grace. It also allows us to develop our sense of success because we're partnering now. We're recognizing our inherent partnership with infinite success because spirit is successful, if nothing else. Would you agree? Yeah. So we're building that and we're building that trust and we're building our own confidence in the goodness of the divine within us and our relationship with it. And then we can begin to overcome those fears, the mental fears and the worldly fears. When we're afraid of life, we limit the life that we're living. If we're afraid to try, we're afraid to trust, we're afraid to make the phone call, we're afraid to have the difficult conversation, we're afraid to do our work, we're living in limitation. We're living in limitation. I know, they don't know your story, right? They don't know my story. If you knew my story, if you knew what was going on here, if you, you'd know why I can't. Did you know that anything you say after I is an affirmation? No matter what I can, I can't. And so it is. I am, I am not. I will, I will not. Whatever follows, I is your affirmation. Nothing can overcome fear but faith and love. Nothing can overcome our faith, our fear, but faith and love, which is why we've got to move through fear and doubt. Get behind me. 
so that I've got my faith, so that I can be steadfast in that. We can build faith. That's the good news. We can build faith. We do that through experience. We do that through practice. But sometimes we're not willing to do the work. Anybody here last week? Anybody watch last week? Remember what I said? I'd love to have an Olympic body, but I'm not willing to do the work. Y'all remember me saying that? It's bothered me a little bit this week, and I've been thinking more about it. And while I really don't want to do the work for an Olympic body, I am ready to do work, my work, to become a more healthy body. And I've decided, I've set an intention. My intention is to have a more healthy body. My goal is to walk more. Not an Olympic workout, not an Iron Woman workout, not for me. But I have a, I've, I've set the goal to walk more. Okay, now what? <laughs> well, now I have to become willing because last week I affirmed I was unwilling to do the work, didn't I? So now I have to become willing to do the work. Now I can do that through affirmation. I can do that through prayer. I can do that through visualization. I can do that through visioning. I can do that through a vision board and pretty pictures, right? I can do that through a coach. Uh, a, a exercise buddy. You know, there's a lot of opportunities and ways that I can begin to build my willingness to do this. So that's step one, is, or step three, actually, is building my willingness. After I do that, then I get a plan. I get a plan. How am I going to do this? How am I going to add something else into my life that's not there now, right? I've got to make space for it. How am I going to do that? So I have to have a plan. Where am I going to fit it in? And then I put it on my calendar. I put it on my calendar where I put the space in there every day where that's going to go. And then I commit. Then I commit. Now, why didn't I commit first? Seems like I should make a commitment first, right? I can't commit first because I haven't expanded my consciousness yet. I'm still operating from a consciousness that says, I'm not willing to do my work. That's my consciousness. It's going to be hard. I don't have time. It's too hot. That's my consciousness. I'm going to move and expand my consciousness to, I love the heat. I love sweating. I got a treadmill inside. I can do it there. I can go to the mall and I can walk. I can do a hundred different ways to walk and not get hot. Or maybe I just want to get hot. Okay. And I've got time. I'm going to book it in my calendar right here. I'm going to take time every day. I got to get myself over here into this expanded consciousness of desire and willingness and wanting to do this. Does that make sense? We have to make space. We have to change ourselves. We have to change our thinking about what it is we want to experience. I want a healthier body. I got to get willing to do the work because it's. I, I I wish I could just a healthy body. Wouldn't that be nice? But, you know, it's not. So there you have it. That's how we do that. What's your dream? What's your goal? What are you doing to expand your consciousness to receive it? What are you doing to receive it? Each week we end our talk with some take-home practices called Practicing the Principles. And we do this so that you can take this study home with you and use it throughout the week in your life, apply it in your life. And the science of mind is not a, a theoretical teaching. It's a practice. It's a practice. So that's why we do this. You can sign up for the email that I send out in the lobby, or you can send me an email um, to the church. You can do that right there. And um, it will. I will get you on the list for that. that comes out every Monday morning. So let's take a look at our principles. Number one is asking ourselves this week, what inspires you to keep going? Just really looking within, what inspires you? 
are you a person that needs external motivation, carrot and stick kind of thing? Or is it internal motivation that happens? Inspiration can be a little ethereal, uh, difficult to understand. And Webster's tells us that it's being mentally stimulated to do or feel something or that it's a sudden, brilliant, creative, or timely idea. So it can be an aha idea, or it can be a mental stimulation of an enthusiasm or excitement. This week, I want us to take time to pay close attention to your feelings of being inspired, of being inspired. Does it feel like it is an aha moment to you? Or do you feel it more in a gut feeling? Some people feel it in their bodies more, right? And um, it may be a brilliant or creative idea, or it may come from someone external to you. Have you ever seen something that you went, oh my gosh, expand, right? You see something, it triggers, and you want to expand, you have a new idea. I had the privilege of being in the dental chair this week. Yeah. My dentist has a computer monitor in front of the chair that they have beautiful landscape pictures on that, you know, one's a beach and one's a mountain. Takes you all sorts of different places to keep you entertained while he's plundering your mouth. And um, you know how they lean you way back in the chair, my favorite part, stand on your head. And um, I found that I couldn't see the monitor. I could see the white ceiling. (laughs) It's like, huh. What if they put a TV up there and gave me the Bluetooth headset that I could turn up really loud so I couldn't hear him hear him drilling and poking around in there that would distract me, right? So it was an aha, inspirational idea of selling dentist TVs to fit in the grid above and giving the headset to the patient to be able... It was not mine to do, okay? It was an idea but it's not mine to do. And that's the sort of out of the blue creative ideas that come to all of us all the time, right? Had I not been working on this talk, I probably would not have remembered that. How many of those inspirational ideas pop in your head throughout the day? Somebody should create a, create a, invent a, do a, right? How many of those hit us all day long? Pay attention to that this week. Keep track of them in your journal and notice what it is that's inspiring you. You may find patterns, patterns of inspiration. Wouldn't that, ooh, that's a good book. That's a good book. We'll do Scottsdale Center for Spiritual Living's Patterns of Inspiration, and you can all contribute to it. Another idea just popped in my head. Too much fun. All right. Number two, who loves you, baby? Remember who said that? Kojak. Remember the old TV series, Kojak? Yeah, Telly Savalas. It's a great question to ask ourselves. Now, when I say, who loves you, baby? (laughs) Do you go in your mind to an inventory of everybody outside yourself? Or do you go within and go, I do, I do, I do. What'd you do in that moment? Ask yourself, who loves me? Do you say I do? Yeah, self-love, self-love. This week, I want you to get in touch with your heart, to get in touch with self-love because self-love, love itself is the, as was at home said, the most healing power that there is, is love. Love heals fear and doubt. So it's important that we begin within. We begin with our own self-love. We're going to do an old practice by wonderful Louise Hay. Remember her mirror work? Anybody done it? We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. And basically, you spend time in front of a mirror this week, looking deeply, lovingly into your eyes and saying, I love you. And you keep saying it until you believe it. And then you move on and you go, I really love you. I really love you. And you keep saying it. And you keep saying it in front of the mirror, in front of your, to yourself, until you really feel it. 
A lot of people have a hard time with this for the first few times they do it. But it's a wonderful practice that Louise created years ago that uh, is transformative when we truly practice it on a deep level. So I invite you to do that and to notice if it does take several tries, several days, maybe a week to get yourself there and uh, record your experience in your journal of this exercise for you and see where you kind of are on that scale. We each have within us, of course, the amazing power to transform our thoughts, to change them from limiting to empowered. We can build our faith. We can expand our consciousness. We are amazing beings, are we not? I mean, think about what I just said. We can expand our consciousness. We can do all that stuff I just said that just flew out of my head. I don't know where that came from. But anyway, we can do all that stuff. Replay. Um, we can. We can do all that stuff. We are amazing creatures. So take that amazement with you into your week this week. Use it. Use it to build your faith, to expand your consciousness, to grow your love. I want to close today with a quote from Martin Luther. He says, faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace, so sure and certain that we will stake our life on it a thousand times. Where is your faith today? So it is. Would you join me for a prayer, please? As we go within, we recognize the infinite love that is within us for we are divine love. We are spirit in the flesh, created in the likeness and image of the divine. We are expressions of that infinite love that God is, the wisdom and intelligence that it is, the harmony, the balance, the peace, and the continuation of the expansion of our consciousness, of our awareness of this, deepening in our relationship to this universal spiritual presence, this life energy that is within us, this God spark that lives, moves, and has its being within each of us through our lives as expressions of us, as we individualize it as our lives, the way we choose to do. I know that each of us is unified in this wholeness with each other in this room online. There is no separation. We are one. And so knowing that, accepting that unity, I speak my word for and about each of us this day, knowing, claiming, and accepting this divinity that we are, this amazing life force that goes through us, that is this mind of God that we all share and live in and move in and create within. And I know that each of us has within us dreams and desires for a fuller expression, an expanded expression of life through us. I know, too, we have the capacity to expand our consciousness to receive that. As we open to the guidance of spirit and showing us how we know what, that's our job. That spirit is leading the how. I know for us today that anyone that has a prayer on their heart and their mind that they are looking for comfort with, that as, we, as they lift that into this prayer time, into the consciousness of this community, that we wrap our love and our consciousness around this and know the wholeness and the perfection of this love, this being of light that is seeking clarity or prosperity or love, peace, joy, harmony, health, creative expression, ideas, inspiration, whatever it might be, we just wrap them in our arms of love and know that for them now and here. And how grateful I am for this knowing and for this truth and for this community, this community that love built, knowing that each of us that is a part of it has added our love to it and continues to allow it to flow to the community and through each one of us. 
I'm so grateful for the manifestation of this prayer. As I release it into the action of law, knowing that it is done, it is so, and we just allow it to be, and we are open and receptive to its manifestation through us as our lives now. And we affirm this truth together by saying, and so it is.